Sync jumps often get criticized for not being useful for casual play, but while you may not be doing sync jumps in game, a lot of the skills transfer over. Learning sync jumps helps you get a better understanding of how fast your rockets move and how fast you're moving, and it also improves your sense of timing and distance. The precision required for these jumps helps you become consistent, and makes it all the more satisfying to hit a good sync. Sync jumping is heavily influenced by network settings, and if you're still using the default settings, you'll have a harder time learning how to sync, especially with jumps 5 and 8. Check out my video on jump settings to get that straightened out. These settings are useful to have updated for casual play too. Now to learn how to sync. Sync jumping is performed by shooting one rocket early, so you reach your destination before it does. Then, you perform a normal rocket jump, crouching, shooting, and jumping all at once, timed with when the first rocket lands. This way, you have a rocket jump with twice the rocket. It's important to delay shooting your first rocket until pretty late. Since rockets travel at a constant speed, you can maximize the time you wait on the ground by waiting to shoot until you're going at the same speed that rockets do. If you shoot too early, you'll land before your rocket does, or if you're barely early, right as your rocket does. If you shoot late, you'll land before your rocket for sure, but you won't have another rocket loaded by the time the first one hits the ground. Play around with your timing to get it right. To prepare for the sink, you have some choices. Do you walk off, jump off, or do you rocket jump off? Any of these will work, but there's a trade-off. The higher you're coming from, the longer you'll end up waiting on the ground. Waiting longer can help people who aren't so comfortable doing a regular rocket jump so quickly after landing, but waiting longer periods makes the timing harder. I recommend either walking or jumping off. If you're still having trouble getting the sync, try varying your timing to see if that fixes it. You might also want to try this for practice. Just walk off, not shooting a rocket before getting to the ground, and then doing a powerful rocket jump as early as possible once you land. Some people I've seen struggle with sync have good timing, but aren't executing good rocket jumps, so they don't get very high. If you need it, the very top of the wall can be shot, which can help you climb the rest of the way up if you're close. For whatever reason, all of the other jumps have a blue area to indicate that you can shoot it, but this jump doesn't, even though you can. Jump 2 ramps up the difficulty in two ways. The height you need to get with this jump is more than the last one, and you need to finish the jump off with a wall climb. The wall climb will be easier or harder depending on how good of a sink you get going into it. Note that the distance to the ground is a little different than in the first jump, so you'll want to adjust your timing accordingly. I've seen a lot of people get the sink multiple times before they can get a wall climb to follow it up. Oftentimes this is because they don't try to aim for the climb before they reach the shootable area. Remember that you need to aim low for those rockets on that wall. If you're aiming up, it can be very hard to get the right aim. Jump 3 has you set up your own sink rather than having you fall off to get a height for it. Using three rockets to climb the wall will set you up at a similar height to the first two jumps. From there, you can gauge your height and adjust your timing to try to get a good sink. You can use your WASD keys to stop yourself mid-air, so that way you can aim straight downwards without worrying about landing elsewhere. Adjusting yourself mid-air by tapping these keys is quite important for sink. When you've hit your sink, you'll be rising a lot faster than any wall climb you've done before. Remember that when you're moving fast like this, the time that it takes for your rockets to reach the wall becomes very important. You can aim pretty high, such as straight at the wall, to maximize the height that you gain on the climb. Jump 4 introduces two new difficulties that you'll need to grapple with. First, you need to do a couple of wall shots to get the speed to cross the gap and prepare to sink. Second, you need to do a sink moving rather than stationary. For the wall shots, remember to keep good technique. Aim, shoot, look forwards, strafe, repeat. Then, once you're moving towards the end, try to gauge where you'll land. This is hard to do if you don't have much experience going so fast and falling so far, but this jump is a good opportunity to learn. Knowing where you're going to land is another useful skill that you can acquire by practicing sink jumps. Even though the wall shots and the moving part of the sink are working against you, this is the shortest sink in the course so far, so don't be too intimidated. 
Jump 5 is the first jump where you'll see major changes depending upon your ping and network settings. Shoot a rocket towards the other side, either low on the wall or on the white square will do, but I suggest using the wall since the timing will be more consistent. Once you shoot your rocket, jump into the black teleport above you. You'll be sent over to the other side where you can watch your rocket come at you. The higher ping you have, the further back the rocket will appear to be. This is even more extreme if your LERP is high. If you're getting hit by both rockets, but having trouble getting good height, chances are you're trying to do your rocket jump late. Remember that your rocket will always appear further back than it actually is when playing online. If you've been aiming at the wall, try to back up towards the wall with S so that you're closer to your rocket. Jump 6 returns to a falling sink, but it's the first one that you're doing where you need to go for distance rather than for height. The distance you get will be some combination of where both rockets hit you, so you can get more distance by shooting either rocket, or ideally both rockets, so they explode behind you. For the second rocket, stock users can aim straight down while walking to the left, uh, holding A, to get the rocket to land behind them. If you're using the original, it's a bit harder, since you need to turn around to get your rocket behind you, while still trying to walk in the same direction. Some people will find it pretty difficult to pull that off, especially in the context of a sink. It can be easier for those players to just rely on the first rocket in the sink, landing far enough behind them to provide the distance they need. But it's also worth them learning how to do that sort of rocket jump. Careful you strafe efficiently during this jump, so you don't lose speed you need to get to the end. In jump 7, you need to pull off two sinks. The first one is similar to jump 6, but there aren't any barriers in your way to strafe around. The second is similar to jump 4 since it's a moving sink. The tips and tricks for both of those jumps will apply here. Keep working on this one, it can take some time, but it's satisfying to beat. If you've made it to jump 8, congratulations, you're almost done. You've got a formidable challenge to tackle yet though. All of the previous sinks in the course were double sinks, meaning that they use two rockets, but this last jump is a triple. Two rockets get bundled in the air so they land at the same time, and then the third is done with a rocket jump on the ground. There's a couple of ways to line the first two rockets up for this triple. In both ways, once you're shooting rockets, use WASD to keep yourself in place mid-air. The easy way to line yourself up is to walk off, aim straight down, and then hold S and M1 as soon as your cursor moves over the line. You'll be falling at just the right speed that both rockets will happen to be well lined up. This method may be easier, but the other is much more applicable to various jumps, and it can be used any time that you're falling straight down for a triple. To bundle the two mid-air rockets without using an indicator, wait to shoot the first rocket until you've started falling a bit, but not as long as you would for a double. You want to be able to see your rocket after you shoot it, but you don't want for it to go too far away from you either. If it gets too far away, it'll be hard to line up your next rocket. That second mid-air rocket should be shot a little bit after the first one disappears through you. The exact amount you'll have to wait is going to differ depending upon ping. The higher the ping, the longer you should wait. This is because, remember, the actual position is different than what you're seeing. So by waiting, you fall a little bit further and end up placing your rocket exactly where the first is. Whichever method you use to line up your first two rockets, the ending will be the same. Look up at your bundle as soon as you shoot that second rocket, and watch it as it falls to the ground. Similarly to jump 5, time your last rocket when the first two arrive. If your timing and rocket jump is good, you'll fly up fast and have a shot at the end of the jump. For some people, this ground rocket is the most difficult part of the triple. It may be easier to give yourself more time for the triple, which you can do by rocket jumping off instead of walking off. Remember that if you choose to do this, you can't use the line to make the timing for your mid-air rockets easy anymore. That only works with walking off. If you struggle with the walls at the end, you can try slowing yourself down with S before trying the wall pogo or waiting for a good enough sink to make it pretty easily even with a bad wall shot. Each extra time you have to get a good triple, 
you're giving yourself more practice that will pay for itself later. Best of luck to you as you play Easy Sync. Let me know if there's anything in the course that you still struggle with after watching the video and putting in time to practice. Thanks for watching and have a great day.